I always was working with voice. I started te- being taught to sing when I was 16. I got to university and voice was a big component there. And then, as any actor will tell you, you need to do a job in between your acting jobs that doesn't kill you. So I was voice coaching. Last year I was in uh, Sheffield Crucible doing working on a play there with deaf people. I worked at Manchester Royal Exchange um, and I also work at London Met teaching voice on the theatre and performance uh, theatre and performance practice degree. There's a lot of physical barriers towards good vocal production, but there is inhibition, which is a, a psychological problem. And then we see people carry enormous tension in their jaws, in their shoulders, in their necks, and tension stops you from releasing the potential of your voice. And then I work with singing, because singing is, once you get past the uh, feeling of um, shyness that people have often with singing, you say, it doesn't matter, you know, we're not training Maria Callas here, we just want you to relax and open the throat, because from opening the throat we can help with projection, we can help with being, being seen and heard on stage, because it, you know, it is a thing, if you're seen on stage is one thing, but to be seen and heard is another thing again. The common thing is that everybody's different. And so we have to find ways of working that appeal to young people when they are um, on a process of reinventing themselves, but they don't quite know where that's going and how it's going to work out. And we need to try to you know, get to the spirit of them in such a way that whatever work they do with their voice, that it feels like it's them. Even if it's transformational, it still needs to feel like it's you know, at home inside the person and then moving through the person who's going on that, that vocal journey. So it, it starts off with trust, it starts off with fun, it starts off with creativity, it starts off with being, being interested in how do people speak, which are, I mean, it's endless, it's endless. Everything has a logo. Uh, clothing has a logo. People, even the kind of makeup that people use has a logo and so forth. So people make themselves with the products that they tend to put on themselves. Whereas to find the, the truth in the voice isn't just about uh, uh, an aesthetic that pleases people because of a particular sort of sound set. Um, uh, actually, it's more to do with something that comes from the core. If you make your voice a logo, you've only really got one expressive choice. And that's unlikely to sustain you for a whole career. So actually there's a delight in finding the different, in these different ways of speaking and, um, and it's something that's really natural to us. We're kind of like vocal octopus. We can change our shape, we can change our vocal patterns, provided we do so playfully and free, freely um, and then see how it um, connects to the core. It's in our species, it, it, in a way, often with a restrictive use, what we're doing is letting certain sorts of fashion dominate the flexibility that we naturally have. Um, but who knows which way it's going to go. I was very fortunate. I was on the BBC on the radio rep for quite a long time with the BBC World Service, which is slightly different from the main radio rep. Um, so about a hundred years ago, I was I was doing that, and then from there, I had a, there were a lot of spin-offs into commercial radio and more educational animations. So yeah, I think um, the main thing when you're in a studio is a much smaller space as opposed to being on the stage where you're actually getting everything out there and you've, you've got to project a lot more. You've got to love the microphone, it, it, you're telling a story and the people, generally speaking, who are listening, um, say if you're doing a radio commercial or a TV commercial, they're sitting down, they're just, just quite, it's quite intimate for what you're portraying. Um, so just, just be aware that you're telling that one person or just those couple of people rather than being in a theatre where you're telling you know, a few hundred people. Your reading skills are very, very important. Often scripts are, you literally arrive in the studio and you're given the script now to do. So you sight reading. Prim primarily sight reading, if you've got accents that are naturally your native accent, work towards that rather than trying to flatten everything off into standard English. Make sure your voice is very, very well warmed up. Any, any actor, they all, everyone knows how to do all your voice warm-ups and um, you know, make sure that you're, you're fully prepared before you leave the house in the morning, make sure you've got that. Um, don't have any coffee or chocolate or milk or any fizzy drinks that are going to muck up your voice. So um, again, the main thing I think is to just be prepared. You're working in front of the microphone. Just, just very, be very aware that you are. It's you and and the microphone there, and just get to love it. <laughs>